Ascend the mountain effortlessly, your spells protecting you from the stinging Himalayan winds. There is such confidence in your step, such unyielding assurance. How you have changed in the twenty years since you first dared these trackless peaks. But Dr. Stephen Strange was a mere man then, bitter, spiteful, avaricious and grim as death. Now, so the whispered legends would have us believe, you are far more. Now you are called Master of the Mystic Arts. Since assuming this majestic title, you appear to have ripped bile, malice, and greed from your heart. A pity you have not yet learned to smile. So you walk on, a dour child dancing with the shades of memory, the image of the wretch you once were, reflected in the blinding snows. Remember, a brilliant, vain, and egotistical surgeon who scorned Hippocrates and worshipped Mammon. Remember, the automobile accident that damaged the nerves in the surgeon's precious hands. The icy disbelief as he learned he would never perform an operation again. Ah, Stephen, how desperation gripped you then, driving you from self-pity to alcohol, and finally to the Orient, where you pursued inarticulate rumors, midnight fancies, and a magic that could cure your ruined hands. Magic. It suffuses this ancient temple still. Magic! Not the parlor tricks of the Western illusionist with his half-sword women and rabbit-stuffed hats. Not the vulgar spectacle of the Eastern yogi who gambles across hot coals proclaiming his enlightenment. Magic! Rare and ineffable, it cuts you like a scalpel, filling you with an ecstasy that borders on pain. And a pain so sweet it could be called bliss. It is the magic of a man whose scattered followers knew him only as the Ancient One. A man you call Master. He left you, Stephen. Left this plane of existence years ago. Yet you feel his presence here as plainly as you did when you first staggered through these sacred halls. The Ancient One saved me. You once told a disciple. He took an animal and made him a man. He took a man and raised him up, recast in perfection's image. Now oh, he gave me so much to be thankful for. And perhaps it is to give thanks that you have been drawn back here on the anniversary of the Master's death. Death. Can we call it death when a centuries old Sadguru takes leave of his body? and merges with creation itself, when an ideal man cuts loose the limitations of the flesh and becomes one with all that is. But think, Stephen, if he is everywhere, in everything, then he is here as well. His words echo around you, imprinted upon the ether, Words spoken often and wisely. Only in silence, he used to say, can the deafening roar of the infinite be heard. In memory of what your master was, in honor of what he is, kneel once more before him and open your heart to his deafening silence. Ah, 
very impressive, Stephen. Although deep in trance, you remain alert to every breath and shadow. Attack your calm protection. Attacking your casual efficiency. How simple it is for you to conjure a spell that immobilizes your adversary. Simpler still to pierce his mystic shields and reveal that the one you face is truly three. Sad who's of the mountains they are. Wandering ascetics who have spent untold years pursuing that elusive beast called Wisdom. But in his upward climb, the Aspirant unlocks many doors of the soul. And there is none more dangerous than the door to the fourth plane of consciousness. The realm from which all magics emanate. Enchantment is intoxicating, Stephen, even to those well versed in its ways. Without a master's guidance, the purest of heart becomes drunk after one sip from the cup of miracles. So it was with these besotted unfortunates. Ah, but the great Doctor Strange does not see them as such. He sees only fools revealed in Agamotto's light. Dangerous fools who would desecrate a shrine in their attempt to leech the Sorcerer Supreme's power. Shine your rays, you command the all-seeing eye, into every black corner of their minds. They must understand their folly. More important, they must never breach my master's chamber again. I fear time will disappoint you, Stephen. No memory of this defeat will haunt their days and hound their nights. These three will walk this way again. And they will be far wiser for it. The shadows scamper, frightened mice down the mountainside. Satisfied and proud, you watch their flight. How often the Ancient One chided you about this elevated sense of self. Your ego is a formidable block of wood. I whittle and whittle, my blade grows dull and the block remains. Remember the living example he held up to you from your very first day of discipleship. Remember the unassuming votary who washed the master's clothes, bathed his infirm body, ministered to his every need without a word of thanks given or requested. Amir, or the hermit, the silent one, the living shadow. He who now glides from the shadows to greet you. Years like snowdrifts have blown by since the Ancient One's ascension. Yet Amir has remained here, a ruin among ruins, attending those few souls who come on holy pilgrimage. His voice is soft, a wind chime, and you repress an urge to ask him to speak up. You respect Amir, yet something in his bland servility his ever-smiling eagerness to please, as always, and even now you are ashamed to admit it, annoyed you. He bows before you, and your annoyance is drowned in an ocean of warm remembrance. This stooped little old man, yellowed like an old book with age, is a link to the master. For your days of clumsy, Gallant, exhilarating apprenticeship. So you strain to hear him, at first bewildered by the slow parade of whispers. Then you see the shrouded object held in palsied hands, decipher two words, Master and Gift. A gift from the Master, you finally realize, left by him. For you, years before his passing, with instructions for its presentation on this day alone. A blessing, you think, plucked like a rabbit out of time's hat. A box. New York City, Greenwich Village, Sanctum, Security, Confusion. For three hours you have examined it from every vantage point. 
Yet you've sensed no magical emanations, no latent spells, no astral messages. So you begin again. Slowly. Slowly. The outside is carved wood, simple and unadorned. No inscriptions, no runes gauged into its surface. A gentle spell to turn it back on its hinges. And you find... yourself. Your own frustration and curiosity reflected back at you through a maze of mirrors. A maze of mystery. Why, Stephen? Why would the Ancient One set this aside for you and then leave no clues to its meaning? Why was Hamir ordered to keep the box hidden until now? Why? No secret, you'll think, is impenetrable. For every spell there is a counterspell. Yet both secret and spell continue to elude you. So you wander the streets as you did in your days of drunken dereliction. Wander in search of a stubborn answer that refuses to bend to your will. The man of old would have retreated into the bottle. The mystic of today returns to his task with renewed vigor. There is no grimoire, you say aloud. For your own benefit? Or are you trying to impress the box itself? I haven't studied. No incantation, however elaborate, has failed to pass my lips. Men call me wizard, wonder worker, warlock, sorcerer supreme! Failure. Meditation. Rumination. Lucifration. Frustration. For four weeks now, you have scoured arcane volumes, from the Book of Asmodeus to the secret teachings of Zoroaster, with no success. Exhausting every enchantment you've ever known, and a hundred more newly learned. Forty days pass, and forty nights. You have gone without sleep, without food, without satisfaction, without pride. What are you, Magic Mirror? You muse. My temptation? The devil mocking my achievements, seducing my weaknesses? You stare into its glassy depths and see your every base desire. Ten thousand horrible demons reaching out to you. You reach back. Then withdraw. Then scream, I hate you! You're not a talisman or a charm! You don't harbor any impenetrable secrets or unfathomable spells! You're just a worthless mirror! And in destroying it, you feel ashamed. And in your shame, you see yourself. And in seeing, you understand. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Master, you cry. Of course. It is what it is. Just a silly, maddening, absolutely ordinary. Oh, crap. Oh, oh, oh crap, Stephen. Such a mundane utterance from the Sorcerer Supreme. I'd expected by Sidorax Crimson Bands, or Vipers of Valtor, or what was your other favorite? Ah, yes, Shades of the Seraphim. But, oh, crap! <laughs> Most unimaginative. Although I suppose you can be forgiven this slight transgression under the circumstances. Being suddenly thrust with no warning into a dimension as peculiar and powerful as this would shake even the mightiest oak to its roots. Yet in your confusion and alarm, there is a gentle elation as well. You grasp for meaning and find personal glory. I have passed the Ancient One's test, you surmise. 
and realizing that the mirror was just that and nothing more. I have had the gateway to a new realm of being opened to me. An interesting interpretation of events. But you, of all men, know that reality has more skins than a snake. Each skin a new truth, each truth a new illusion. Hear me, Doctor Strange. God is a magician. Reality is trick. And it is all done with mirrors. The universe becomes glass around you. Light and heat and white infinity. A chorus of voices thunders in your mind. Your consciousness splinters. Your soul cracks. There is a fullness. Then, a void. And from the void, a word. Shambhala. Shambhala. Where history is dictated. Human events molded. Where the souls of history's greatest masters are set to dwell. And watch. And guide mankind. You have heard the ancient legends. But never dreamt that such a place existed outside the realm of myth and parable. Yet here you are. Drifting awestruck and insignificant through the constantly shifting landscape. Before you floats a column, a tower, more consciousness than form. The unified being of the lords of Shambhala. They speak to you, these lords, in words that are not words. In symbols and sounds, scents and textures. Your mind grasps, but the words remain unintelligible. Your heart opens, and all becomes clear. We call, we call upon, upon you, you, say the wordless words, to perform, perform a special, a special task. task. What is it you feel inside you, around you? The earth stands, stands upon the verge of a golden age, age. An, era an era when selfishness and contention will vanish, will vanish. when selflessness when and harmony, and harmony, harmony will, abound. will abound. A presence so bright, so strong, a magic, so familiar. But this, but this golden, golden age, age must be preceded by disaster, by disaster purification, purification, purge. 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 What, prophets, what prophets, religions, religions saints, saints, sects, 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 sects and, and seers, seers have foretold, the, the lords of Shambhala now decree. Now decree. The same magic that touched you all those weeks ago in the Himalayas. A cataclysm, a cataclysm beyond, beyond imagining, imagining will leave, we'll leave this world a ravaged wasteland, waste waste burying waste the old humanity, old humanity and birthing birth the, new. the new. His magic, the Ancient One's magic. We have, we have chosen, chosen you, Dr. Strange, Dr. Strange, as our agent. There is a spell, is a spell you must cast, cast, a three-part three spell, part spell, 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 which only an addict of your skills can complete. When it is when done, it is the, done final the final cataclysm will be unleashed, unleashed, and the golden, the golden age, age will dawn. The Ancient One, you realize, is here. When he left his body, he must have been absorbed into the cosmic body of the Shambhalese Lords. Behold, command the Lords, and you see the Earth consumed by fire and disease. Behold! Behold. And you watch three fourths of humanity die. Awestruck, you witness the slow rebuilding as the scattered survivors sow the seed from which a new race springs. A race that ultimately attains the perfection humankind has so long sought. Behold! And paradise is revealed. Why then? Do you feel sickened by this glimpse into man's future? Why do you want to turn and run, abandoning the mystic for the human? Oh, Master! You call, unsure where to focus your eyes. I cannot do this! Is any paradise worth so much destruction, so much death? Then, you hear language as you know it. Gentle, unshakable, familiar. 
of faith, child. Do what is asked of you. Master? Say yes, child. Say... Master! Yes. Hear me, Doctor Strange. God is a magician. Reality is trick. And it is all done with mirrors. The universe becomes glass around you. Light and heat and white infinity. A chorus of voices thunders in your mind. Your consciousness splinters. Your soul cracks. There is a fullness. Then a void, and from the void, a world, Shambhala. Think, it is called the Ley System, a series of invisible grids that crisscross the globe, connecting primal power spots, earthly centers of divine energy. Think. The ancient priests and sorcerers, using geomancy, the study of the lay system, built their temples and burial grounds, observatories and worship places upon these power spots. Think. The flow of energy through the ley lines has always reflected and fed man's inner state. Now, so the Shambhalese lords say, those energies are sluggish, nearly dormant. Cosmic artery clogged by centuries of spiritual decay. Think that artery must be repaired. The blood of the earth must flow freely. Only when the power spots interconnect and merge, as they did in ancient times, can man evolve to the next level of consciousness. Here, in the jungles of Yucatan, where Cortez trampled the Aztecs, and Quetzalcoatl's power still permeates the land. The surgery begins. Ah, but the great surgeon is no longer saving lives. Now, he is saving souls. And to do it, he must obliterate three quarters of the world. This thought is too much for you, Stephen. And you push it away, concentrating on the here and now, on the eye of Agamotto, as it pierces the jungle gloom, revealing a hidden truth. A pyramid buried here for centuries, decomposed corpse of a dead civilization. And though the surgeon may view death as an irrevocable end, the Savior sees with other eyes. A careful gesture, a whisper incantation, and dead truth rises from the jungle floor. But like every truth, this one is many-sided. A pyramid above and below. Within lies the first fragment of a spell old as creation. A spell that, once all three fragments have been reactivated, will set the lay energies free, bringing forth Armageddon, 
and apotheosis. Armageddon. The enormity of what you have been asked to do, the simple human horror of it, fills you with renewed apprehension, and you struggle to contain it. I felt the Ancient One's presence among the Shambhali's lords, you remind yourself. I know he would never lead me onto the wrong path. And yet... You recall the many times the Master told you that birth and death Joy and suffering, all the world is just a dream. The play of Maya, queen of illusion. It is the, it undying, is the undying reality, reality behind, behind illusion, behind. he said. That sustains, that sustains us, 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 unites us, unites us lifts, lifts us out of Maya's clutches. clutches. And yet, as if in response to your own doubts, shapes, Emerge from shadow, snake forward, ensnare you. Pines, guided by some unseen hand, by an enemy who wishes to prevent your entry into the pyramid and force your early surrender. But you are Doctor Strange, and you will never surrender. A minor bit of sorcery and the vines recede. A doorway at the base of the pyramid slides open in response. And you wonder, perhaps this wasn't an attack, but a test, designed ages ago by the pyramid's architects. A guarantee that only the worthy should enter and bathe in the light of ancient days. The spell fragment floats there on the air, waiting for your touch. Floats as it supposedly floated for 12,000 years, since Atlantis and Mu were washed away, the last golden age drowning with them. Survivors from Mu's lost continents are said to have spread out across the Earth, a colony of Atlanteans settling here where they built these pyramids, these temples, these road signs, to perfection. Concentrate on ether, air, and form, on transmutation of energy. Conjure two pallets of mystic force, two spheres that will merge with the fragment. Add to it. Revive it. Act. Now! <laughs> the spell responds, awakens, reforms. But something is wrong. Time is wrong. The wall between what was and what is has dissolved. You stand simultaneously within the temple. And in ancient Atlantis, on that long ago day of catastrophe, the end of an age is no longer a vague intellectual notion, but a fact. You hear the shrieks of torment, feel the agony and desperation of fate's victims, and doubt that scaled, fish-eyed thing swims again to the surface of your mind, grips you, drags you down. You are drowning in time and doubt, Stephen. You are dying! No! No! This world is illusion! Time is illusion! The illusion can be transcended! So, time's tidal wave ebbs. So the first spell fragment is restored. You are triumphant. You are proud. But your pride is a blindfold. It blocks your view as you stagger on toward the edge of a great abyss. Southern India. Here in this Hindu temple, 15 miles outside Bangalore, the second of the three spell fragments rests. Left so the lords of Shambhala say, by the survivors of Mu, the fathers of Vedic wisdom. 
You are certain now that what happened in Yucatan was part of a concerted attack. The work of someone, perhaps a group, attempting to thwart the Lords and prevent man's evolutionary leap. Whoever they are, you reflect, I beat them easily enough. They'll think twice before trying again. So you forget them and focus on the task at hand. Discovering that it is difficult to focus when surrounded by such rare and delicate beauty. In the West, a thing often flaunted, marketed like some cheap perfume. Beauty. Ah, but in the East it hides, diffident behind a veil, waiting for the song of Krishna's flute, waiting for the call to awaken. You study them as they encircle you, dancing and delighting. And although you sense that your unseen opponent is behind this miraculous transformation, you feel no fear. No. All you feel is a sudden rising. Years of discipline and austerity drop away. The shadow of a man you once were enfolds itself about you. You are no longer Dr. Strange, the dispassionate mystic. You are Dr. Strange, the vain and egotistical. Years of discipline and austerity drop away. The shadow of a man you once were enfolds itself about you. You are no longer Doctor Strange, the dispassionate mystic. You are Doctor Strange, the vain and egotistical, the arrogant surgeon who sees beauty and wishes only to possess it. Words spoken long ago echo in your mind. A man like me, you once boasted, can never be satisfied with one woman. I swear to you, even if I could divide myself into a hundred men, I'd still be hungry for more. The time has come to test that boast, Stephen. A centuries-old spell of separation is invoked, and dozens of Doctor Stranges fall into dozens of eager arms. You are sightless now. Unable to appreciate their beauty, struck blind by the light of your own consuming passion. You give yourself over to that light, wanting nothing more than to drift here, empty-headed, empty soul for an eternity, lost in the pleasures of the flesh. Light becomes silence, becomes void. Then, from the void, a presence. Then from the presence of voice. Remember. The voice whispers, soft as a wind chime. Remember. It repeats. Your own voice thunders in response. Go away. Leave me alone. Let me be. Away, awake. The voice insists. Spells must be complete and Master? You speak his name, and you are free. And being free, you wonder. Am I too late? No! This world is illusion. Lust is illusion. The illusion can be transcended! Words of confidence and power. <laughs> Lies, Stephen. Even as the second spell fragment is revealed to you, even as living passion reverts again to stone, you realize that there has been no clear victory here. For you know how close you came to utter failure. So weave your necromantic tapestry, Sorcerer Supreme. Restore the ancient fragments to full power, but be sure to check the tremble in those nimble surgeons' hands. Be sure to remember. 
Great Britain. You thought coming here by boat would give you time to catch your breath, restore your balance. But the strain you have felt since leaving India has only increased. Why? Is it because you underestimated your hidden enemy? Because you overestimated yourself? Or is it something more? Since your pilgrimage to the Ancient One's temple, you have been aware of a presence. His presence, of that you are certain. On the periphery of your consciousness. Gently guiding your hand. But in Bangalore, that presence reached inside you, dragged you, kicking and screaming from passion's embrace. Left alone, you would have failed. It was the presence, you grudgingly admit, that won the day. And the inevitable thought forms. Perhaps it's been the presence molding my life, my choices, all these years. I've fancied myself a great master. Could it be I've been an even greater pawn? Pondering that, you walk on through Lincolnshire. On a nearby hill, a pagan temple once stood. Now, Dorrington Abbey looms above the town. Time worn and weary, watching your advance through hollow eyes. Here, where the ghosts of Atlantis and Mu hover beside the ghosts of druid priests, the ley lines intersect. Here, where the worshippers of a crucified lamb unknowingly maintain the power of this sacred spot, the final spell fragment awaits. Here, the maze beckons. It surrounds the abbey on all sides, an intricate spiral of hedges, stones, and trees, leading to the site of power, the Omphalos, where the final fragment rests. You enter cautiously, warily, understanding that the greatest challenge of all, the greatest danger, awaits within. Yet as you step forward, you feel your concentration breaking, your thoughts grow muddled. You look around you and suddenly realize that you are hopelessly lost. You wonder, a sleepwalker. You wonder, a fool. Each turn, the wrong turn. Each step, the wrong step. And then you spy the glass and the shadows deep within it. Ten thousand horrible demons, your every base desire, reaching out to you. The maze is gone. You find yourself standing within the abbey, face to face with your long hidden form. You gaze upon her, unsurprised. Why didn't I see it before? You wonder. And speak her name. Maya. 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 Hear me, Doctor Strange. God is a magician. Reality is trick. And it is all done with mirrors. The universe becomes glass around you. Light and heat and white infinity. A chorus of voices thunders in your mind. Your consciousness splinters, your soul cracks. There is a fullness, then a void. And from the void, a world. Shamala. Of course. She coos in a voice equal parts nightmare and fancy. Who else could cripple you with your psyche's darkest shadows but the queen of shades, the embodiment of illusion? 
Who else would so adamantly oppose your progress? But she who knows that the new man the Shambhali's lords seek to create will see only reality and have no need of me. Think, 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 think. Dr. Strange. She continues, lifting you up with surprising delicacy in her velvet hand. If you complete the spell, all your struggles and trials, all the achievements of mankind will be swept away. It is easy enough for the Lords of Shambhala to predict a golden age and the coming of a new and perfect race. But you and I know that when this new race arises, everything we hold dear, every precious memory, every awful fear, all that is blessed, imperfect humanity, will fall into oblivion. Forgive me, Master. I can't do it. Do you understand? I simply can't do it! I... I... Give... Up... Dispel. He's done. Shambhala. You drift, cold and indifferent across a static landscape. Before you, a column, a tower, more confusion than consciousness. Shambhala, where history is dictated, human events molded, where the self-proclaimed lords of creation babble incoherently, where Stephen Strange speaks. In my moment of surrender, all that I am dropped away. And I saw, no, was shown the truth you couldn't see. The truth even Maya was blind to. I saw that your ultimate cataclysm will take place not without, but within. The purge you foretold will occur in every heart. The fires you foresaw will burn in every soul. The golden age you predicted will come to each man in his own time. And Maya won't perish, no. Our illusions will be the very means of our purification. Shambhala. They listen, but do not hear. We have failed, cried the wordless words. We are flawed, echoed the soundless sounds. There are masters, sense, far greater textures than we are. This simple concept is too much for them to bear, Stephen. Shambhala erupts 
dissolves. The lords collapse in upon themselves, devolve, god to man, to stone, to gas, to nothing. My master was never here. You'll finally admit. The presence was within me, not them. But now the presence is gone. All your eloquence and understanding vanishing with it. Your thoughts are drained. Your soul has been bled. You are empty. Yet you have come to the Himalayas. To this ageless temple where your journey began. Why? To find the source of the presence that has guided and vexed you. To find answers to questions you cannot even articulate. To find... me. Approach me. You have nothing to fear. Master? You are mistaken, Stephen. About many things. What touched you in the Abbey when the shield of your ego was lowered in surrender was indeed a great presence. A great power. But it was not the Master. For he has long since passed into the One. Not the Master. Then who? Amir? Amir. You were not the Ancient One's only heir, Stephen. While you followed the outer path of sorcery and power, I followed the inner path of service and self-effacement. In death, the Master bequeathed you his magic, bequeathed me his spirit. You manipulated me! From the moment you gave me that mirror, you played me for a fool! It was all a game to you! All creation is a game, Stephen. A game of great value, if played properly. You used me! No, you used yourself. For that is what you touched in the cathedral, Stephen. You touched your true self. Riddles! Words. But words alone cannot explain it. What are you? Void. Form, time, ego, illusion, and behind it all, beyond it all, within it all, the power, the light, the presence. Stephen Strange melts away. Amir, Amir melts away. away. Everything, Everything I, I see, see, everywhere, everywhere I, I look, 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 every soul entwined, every, every soul am I. Oh, call me parent, me parent child, child, master, disciple, Maya. Reality. I am the planner and the plan. Creation and creator. Oh, I am. We're separate again, but linked. My revelation, it, it's Mercury slipping away. But you will always remember. At least, I'll try to. Remember, the Golden Age is now. Remember, we are all, each and every one of us, the Lords of Shama.